Nancy, Tawau, Hawaii, Hasal Halt, Brad Weatherick, Nasika. So, my name is Brad Weatherick. I am the Associate Provost Academic Programs, Teaching and Learning here at UBC's Okanagan campus. And it is my genuine pleasure to welcome you here today as we kick off the 14th year of Celebrate Learning Week at UBC. Um, for those in the room, I hope you had a chance to grab some Bannock. Um, I'm really excited that uh, Joni, who's uh, from West Bank First Nation, is our caterer today. And for those of you online, I'm sorry to say you did not get to have Bannock. Um, uh, and uh, for those of you recording at a future date or, or, or for watching the recording at a future date, I, you know, again, sorry that you didn't get to have Bannock. But those of us here in the room, we get to celebrate with, with some Bannock. Um, Celebrate Learning Week is uh, scheduled starting today, May 2nd through May 9th. There are a number of different sessions happening both here in the Okanagan as well as in Vancouver. Um, and this year we're celebrating the theme of power, the power of place in teaching and learning. And it's specifically honoring our commitments that we've made as a campus through the Indigenous Strategic Plan and understanding the importance of the places of our campuses and the places of learning as part of the teaching and learning activities that we, we engage in. The Provost and Vice President Academic from UBCO and UBCV will collaboratively present this week-long initiative, which features um, open lectures, poster sessions, panel discussions, workshops, uh, uh, here on our campus, a Saddle Symposium uh, later this week, for those that are in, interested in the scholarship of teaching and learning, uh, UBC faculty, staff and students, as well as community members are encouraged to join throughout the week and are actually are excited to have them here today with us. We're actually gonna start by uh, inviting Barbara Komlosh, who is an educational consultant for faculty and curriculum development here in UBC's Okanagan campus, who's gonna give us a territorial acknowledgement. Thank you, Brad. Hustle cost. Isquis Barbara Komlosh. Good morning. My name is Barbara Komlosh. I'm welcoming you in the Insotian language from the traditional ancestral unceded lands of the Seal Okanagan peoples. As a new settler, I'm starting to try to learn the language um, as a sign of respect. As I would, I moved recently um, from the United States, from Montana to Kelowna. And if had I moved to India, I would have try to learn Hindi or Bengali, had I moved to New Zealand, I would have tried to learn um, some Maori. So I just respect I'm learning some in social. And actually I'm learning from my children who are learning the culture and the language in school. And uh, one night at dinner, they started singing a song, Hakun um, Sinklip, which is where is Coyote, which I think is appropriate for today's talk. And I wanted to get them to do a recording of this song so that I could play it for you, but they didn't, they didn't buy that. They wouldn't do that for me, um, but don't worry. I'm not going to sing it for you. Um, rather, I just like to share a line from that song, uh, which is skin uh, aspus apna, which is, how are you? Or literally, as I realized, it actually means how is your heart? Because uh, spoos, it means heart. And so today, whether you are joining from the Silk Okanagan territory or Musqueam or other traditional lands, I'd like to ask you, skin aspus apna, how's your heart? For my part, I'd like to say that my heart is filled with gratitude and anticipation of what I can learn um, from Sinkli. So um, please enjoy today. To start us in a good way, I'm, it brings me you know, great joy to be able to introduce you to um, Okanagan Nation member, Amber Cardenas from Pendicton Indian Band, who will be singing the Okanagan song. And if I can request you all to please stand. White has called Yayat, Ipisnak Siluch, um, Nas Yayat, Isquist Arsik, Commander Cardenas, Kintel Sink Pinkton, Kikin with Tapana and Kmapluks, Ispost Halik Limpapanas Hulhalt, 
Hello, good day to all of you and some of my relatives here. Uh, my name is Amber Cardenas and I'm from a place in my language, uh, which is in Pinkton. It's commonly referred to today as Penticton. Um, but now I live in a place uh, in my territory close to Inkmapalux, Kamni Hoot. Um, that's the top, or what's referred to the north end of Okanagan Lake now, uh, near area referred to as Vernon. Um, the song I'm going to sing today is the Okanagan song, and I thought I'd give a little explanation before. Um, the song's in our language, uh, and it's given to us by uh, some of our fluent speakers, uh, Dr. Jeanette Armstrong, uh, Delphine Derrickson, and Herman Edwards, to name a few. And this song, what it says is, Athli, the reason being or because, Athlikus we be numta, we are beautiful. Athlikus ukunach kain, because we are Okanagan. And Athliachai Timhula, because our land uh, or this land right here is beautiful. And the reference of beauty in this song, it's not referring to outer physical beauty um, as a uh, scale of people that we carry. It's referring to anywhere we go within our land or our territory. Um, we find, or you will see a place of beauty, um, and that connection and that relationship of us in the land, it's given to us since the beginning, beginning of time that we've been here. Um, and because this land has given to us and nourished us, that's what makes us beautiful. Um, so that's a little bit about this song. Um, I appreciate the gesture of standing, but if you do need to sit down, by all means, please do. Uh, I don't find that disrespectful at all um, because we should acknowledge our bodies and what we are capable of. So, why e he? That's all I have to say, and I'll sing this song. Oh, 
Because our land is like Oh, and I'm just getting over a cold, so my voice is a little cracked. <laughs> so actually, Amber, before you disappear, we've got a small gift for you. So thank you so much. It is now my pleasure to invite um, Noah Chenoweth up, who, uh, for those that haven't met him yet, uh, he is a graduate student on our campus. He's actually been working with the Center for Teaching and Learning here in the Okanagan as an Indigenous, Indigenous Initiatives Fellow. Uh, he has a long history of also working with Indigenous programs and services and doing a lot of different activities uh, in support of um, Indigenous students and Indigenous um, uh, projects and initiatives on our campus. He's also taking the lead, coordinating the Okanagan side of Celebrate Learning Week. So he is going to introduce our keynote. So Noah. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, yes, my name is Noah Chenoweth. I am a graduate student here at UBC Okanagan, and I have the great privilege of having Dr. Bill Cohen as my supervisor. Um, it's really amazing to have another community member as a supervisor because I'm able to learn more about you know, Okanagan culture, history, epistemologies, and just like ways of being. And I'll forever be thankful that Dr. Cohen has shared these teachings with me. Um, Dr. Cohen is a educator. He's an artist, he's a storyteller, and he's an author. And I am so honored that he is being our keynote for Celebrate Learning Week. And I am very excited for the magic that will come this week. So I'll invite Dr. Cohen up. Oh, hi. Oi, cool and chutin, cook so pina, cocoa welt. Wipe chiap, can limp ki like ulus. Aha, uku silich, sukanakina, hitam hulautit, is the taftit, the scalertit. Lutpen keen to huichmentum, kim to tumistmentum, mithkil to swoys, lakin to skalhalt. So respect to the uh, musquim. Okay, so so this uh, white cool and chutin, it's simply a greeting to all of creation. Uxilapina kuchal chwelt. It's a it's a new day. We're here. Uh, everything we need is here, and much to be thankful for, and much to look forward to. And the the greetings greeted you all as relatives, as friends, and to this to this. Uh, our Sealuk Sukunakinuk homelands, which has never been given away or sold or surrendered, and that our ways continue. And also uh, the respect to the in in Vancouver, to the Vancouver campus, which is situated on the unceded uh, homelands of the Musqueam. And I'm going to talk today, call this uh, talks and clips power to make the world safe for the peoples to be. Coyote story, so we can all have a future. So I'd like to uh, just thank the organizers, uh, Brad, and I'd like to thank uh, Barbara for the for the in election and the connections to to Indigenous peoples and place and connecting to Silic Silic and in election language here. I'll uh, reconnect to some of that and. Uh, also for to uh, Dr. Buzzard for the for the for the intro and to Arsik for the for the Okanagan song. I want to reconnect uh, multiple times to that uh, notion of song and the Okanagan song as a collective uh, a collective expression of what we put into practice as our life ways. So when I was first uh, asked, uh, can you do this uh, keynote to celebrate Learning Week? Then I thought, uh, well, what do Selic and Indigenous peoples have to celebrate? And, and uh, that could uh, get dark in a hurry. So I thought about in this uh, era of climate change, fires, floods, racialized, gendered violence, and 
missing and murdered indigenous women, children, girls, LGBTQ and 2S and white nationalism, intolerance. There's a shot of a, uh, and, and we, we've got this uh, violence against the earth mother, against life givers. So, so I thought about that and thought about uh, the historical connections, particularly related to schooling and, and learning and teaching. So that story is pretty clear. Others removed and continue to remove Scaluk, Selic children from their identity, their rights and their knowledge, language, uh, connections to place. And so there's a lot of other discourses around trauma of um, being traumatized by colonialism, genocide, and all of that, which uh, the residential schools and other aspects certainly certainly were expressions of. So that children were removed from the love and influence of extended families. And that happened here. It happened in many places throughout uh, Canada and, and the world. So we often think about the, all the indigenous peoples were impacted by this. But I just want to point out that everyone else was as well. And that this is, we also were, <clears throat> we're also all dealing with the notions of terra nullius, the empty land, even though we're here. And the social Darwinism of the eugenics, the racialized hierarchies and all those stereotypes, they, they, they're, they're, they're still resonating. So, so, so these are some of what um, we're, we're looking at and, and some of the tra traumatized pathologized view looks at indigenous peoples as, as you know, they're, they've been through a, awful stuff so they need, need, need help and that sort of thing. They need counseling and therapy. So another aspect of that is the that uh, Selic and indigenous peoples are here because of matriarchs, aunties, uncles, extended families who have, who have uh, maintained who we are and who have uh, addressed and overcome a lot of the racist legislation that existed that said uh, we're not allowed to vote, we're not allowed to leave the reserves, we're not allowed to hire a lawyer and all kinds of ridiculous kind of a... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, legislation, and that uh, the residential school survivors, for the most part, it was residential school survivors who who organized the uh, TRC calls to action that we're that we're connecting with now. That the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples; those are those were organized by <clears throat> by by survivors. So the, the point is, is that uh, there's been a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of stuff has happened to us, but we've also found out how capable we really are and that we've got lots to contribute as well. And I <clears throat> wanted to uh, just give, a, give, a, give a, some respect to some of the matriarchs uh, and the life giver, life giving powers that have been expressed. So the, the late uh, uh, Sam Ticha, Sarah Peterson, a lot of what we, the language resources, the language projects and for little kids, for language houses, uh, really, really, really um, have been inspired by, by her. She's a, she inspired the um, All Creek Language Association, which is just continues to resonate on both sides of the border and, many, many communities. And uh, Louise Gabriel, the late Louise Gabriel from Penticton, see the canoe trek was her vision that she said, uh, our, our, our people, we need, to, we need to start building our, carving our canoes again, our traditional canoes and paddling our territory. And, and we need to put all the kids in there and we need to connect to, connect to our Tumich, to our land or or, or we're going to forget who we are and what our responsibilities are to this place. So that um, that resulted in uh, both uh, both the symbolic movement and a very real movement of uh, of of reconnecting to the black cottonwood, 
which are those canoes are made of and the black cottonwood riparian areas, which are so important to uh, filter the water in our ecosystems. And, and the notion of paddling our canoes and, and self being self-determining that way. So that's a, that's a, a major and, and, and uh, Lottie Lindley from uh, Upper Nicola, she's uh, the late Lottie Lindley, some of her, her, she was fluent in multiple interior Salish languages in Seelichen and Tlacupmik, and she's pretty good in some others. But her, uh, her, her stories and work with, uh, with, with uh, linguists uh, continue to, to resonate. And, and also back in the, back in, back in the nineties, this is also in the nineties when the Okanagan song emerged, uh, re-emerged as a, as a, as a identity song, as a connecting to place and responsibility song, reaffirming who we are as, as, as people of this land of the, of the earth, children of the earth. And so in the 1990s, there was the Oka crisis, there was the Gustafson Lake, there was all these standoffs between Indigenous peoples and, and the Canadian government, the military, and, and, and uh, at, at that time, I just, uh, it was almost 30 years ago, I just uh, completed an undergrad and I was at home in the, in, in the Upper Nicola near Merritt, uh, visiting, visiting our relatives. And, and and I call that place home as well, but uh, so when I got there, there was a conflict between the biggest ranch in Canada and the Upper Nicola Band. So upper, uh, the folks from Upper Nicola had been fishing these uh, lakes for millennia, and then the the ranch decided not not anymore. So they locked, blocked all the gates and and blocked access to the to to those lakes. So the band responded with. Uh, well, well uh, both access roads to the ranch go through our reserve, so find another way to get to the ranch. <clears throat> so so, so the, that, that uh, a checkpoint was set up, and so my uncle says, uh, well, you're, from, you're going to university, you might be useful, you better come to the, uh, you might have to talk at the, talk at, at the blockade. So we, so we went over the checkpoint and, and it, it was dark and, and uh, we were we were stopping vehicles and letting people through who were not uh, from the ranch. And anybody from the ranch would say, "No, find another way to get through." Uh, so we're hearing these reports that uh, that uh, the uh, riot squad was going to uh, take us down. We're hearing reports that there were likely snipers that were positioned. So we're hearing all of these reports and about. Uh, you know, maybe the SWAT team might come and uh, you know uh, take us all down. So we're we're in the dark and we're thinking about well, what are we going to do? And and so 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 my uncle he was saying, well, well, we're going to stretch a rope between a couple of horses, and then when that, they come at us, we're going to just mow them all down, knock them down. And so we're, and we're thinking about that, and and as we're thinking about that, and and getting some horses and ropes and. <clears throat> And uh, the uh, Lodi and the and the, the and the other grandmother showed up, and Lodi came in her wheelchair and she parked in front of us, put it in the middle of the road, and said, uh, "said we we she said we brought you guys into into the world. We watched you grow up, and now you stand behind us." And uh, so so we we're oh <clears throat> so so. Uh, so so we we couldn't we, we it was pretty tough to argue so we were at, okay we have to we were standing behind the, the the matriarchs the grandmothers and and they said we're going to do the talking and so so we're we're you know wondering what's going to happen and and it turns out that uh, I think that that move maybe maybe countered some of what may have happened. So the next day, nothing happened that night, but the next day a different agreement was was worked out. So it continued. But um that uh that example of that that uh, era and uh, of indigenous peoples and us being in these uh, pitted against uh 
against uh, obstacles, as the enemy, as as terrorists, as when 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 what we're doing is trying to figure out how we can take care of the the fish, the land, the, the water that we've all <clears throat> that we've always done. So that's uh, sitting there in that uncertainty, trying to figure that out, and the uh, and the matriarchs that. Uh, <clears throat> That that kind of wisdom that's uh, far-reaching into the into the future is what uh, intervened and 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 that continues. And uh, so 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 what uh, what's what's different now with uh, climate change and all of the outcomes of the way we've been living our lives as a larger society is that uh, all of us are. Looking out into the into an uncertain future and figuring out how are we going to take care of this place? How are we going to have a healthy future? And uh, I've got uh, uh, another matriarch who is very much still with us, uh, Jeanette Armstrong, who founded the Anaukin Center, who's who's leading some of the uh, collaborative projects with uh, the Bachelor of Inselich and Language Fluency. And, 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 and multiple projects which uh, connect Selic knowledge and language and epistemology to, to, uh, to collaborations with the university. And out of, the, out of that era, all through that era, at the same time, there were the, the Anaukin Center, Thetis Books, and, and Selic elders were, 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 were sharing stories. So I say indigenizing, Selicizing with Selic Okanagan peoples. I will start with some concepts and frameworks. So concepts and frameworks, we, we can look at, look at that. Uh, uh, first, I uh, developed some courses, uh, Selic concepts and frameworks, Okanagan concepts and frameworks. Uh, I, was, uh, I was amazed at uh, how now, a lot of uh, concepts in our language are are so metaphorical and conceptual, and these uh, stories, these stories are are are, are really these uh, these these amazing uh, uh, frameworks that continuously reposition us as humans into the uh, into the world and as part of the world. So when we um, well. I'll, I'll go through some of these um, some of these uh, uh, concepts. Uh, Chaptic, our our story system. It actually it actually means the the ember, the continuously burning ember that ignites new understanding for coming generations. So it's what's uh, the wisdom that's passed on as a collective practice or praxis. And and uh, the notion of a uh, skeluk, our term for humans, skeluk, uh, skeluk. I've had uh, uh, good fortune to connect with lots of uh, re really really fluent uh, speakers, elders. And skeluk has been explained as skeluk means we're the dreaming ones. As humans, we're the dreaming ones. Anything we can imagine, we can make that happen, because we've got this incredible mind power. And but uh, and this is where we'll, we'll we'll start connecting to the, the coyote stories is that we're not always responsible with that mind power. And and uh, this uh, notion of a uh, pach pach. Uh, so so I'll I'll, I'll connect to I'll, I'll uh, elaborate a little bit more a little bit further on, but. Uh, if you're if uh, somebody if an elder says that you're pach pach, it means that your practice, your practice, the way you conduct yourself, what you contribute, is good for the good for the tamich, good for the land, the ecology, is good for the coming generations, it's good for the people. So it's a collective uh, collective wisdom that you you practice. And so so some of these stories on this trilogy, it's been around for. Or it's been around for for a long time. I think about uh, over thirty years, and now it's also in in Silichen. But how food was given? There are there are numerous uh, doctoral dissertations that are informed by that story. There's uh, the Okanagan Nation 
wellness strategy is informed by that story. And it's a, it's, it's a, what, what, uh, what, what, we're, what we're finding is that uh, uh, a lot of these stories, when they're translated into English, they come across as children's stories, and they are in, in some ways, some aspects, but also that the translation doesn't do the ju justice to the to the story, so it brings up the importance of of, of language and 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 story ways. Uh, how names are given, how turtles set the animals free. These are stories about uh, about transformation, about transforming vision, uh, emancipation. So, and and there are lots of a. Uh, Lots of uh, and, and anyone can have access to these stories. You can, you can, you can purchase them from Theta's books. You can do online searches. There's lots of curricular resources that have been developed. Uh, but uh, there's a this, this is the new thing. It's uh, learning from and with indigenous peoples, in our case, Seelik peoples, in our respective uh, homelands. And uh, so. So I imagine, I imagine some of you have uh, have heard some heard uh, some coyote stories. Perhaps some of you have seen uh, Madeline Terbasket, or or some of you might have. Uh, and, and I encourage any of you you can do a do an online search of uh, of coyote and fox Okanagan stories, and you'll come up with uh, with, uh, with with with, with uh, numerous versions. So I wanted to. Um, I wanted to look at the, the gathering, the bits of coyote. I'm not going to tell the, the whole story right now, for, but I'm going to uh, uh, share, share some of the bits of what uh, happens to Sinclair coyote uh, a lot of times. <clears throat> so so, so in, in, in the one story, you know, he sees a puckle cane, he sees eagle way up in the sky, and he thinks, you know, that should be me. And in, anyways, he ends up... Uh, Going up on a really high cliff and trying to fly, and, and and it doesn't turn out very well. And he finds out he doesn't have wings, and 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 uh, he he starts uh, he starts he starts falling out of the sky, and he starts banging against the cliff, and and he gets starts getting torn apart. And in in the in the in the in the PG rated version, uh, he actually gets his 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 uh, anus gets caught on a rock and poop and everything gets uh, strewn all over and there's a trail all the way down the mountainside, and this uh, mountain is still in Smilkameen. But um, anyways, he gets uh, de destroyed, and that's the end of Sinclip. So Sinclip uh, has a uh, has has a gift, and this gift from creation. Is this incredible mind power? So Sinclair can do amazing things with the mind power. Can move mountains. Can move whole forests. Can, and, and the responsibility that Sinclair was given with uh, that mind power was to make the world safe for the peoples to be, the uh, coming humans. So 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 so. But uh, Sinclair, being Sinclair, doesn't always uh, practice. Uh, uh, good foresight or not always uh, responsible, sometimes appetite or ambition or all kinds of uh, notions uh, <clears throat> uh, distract him and he forgets about those responsibilities. But lucky, luckily, uh, Huaylu, Sinclair's brother, Fox, also has a gift, the ability to bring Sinclair back to life and restore that monster transforming incredible mind power that can make the world safe for the peoples to be and and those are those are some gifts we also um i have gifts from all of the other tamikh the tamikh are all of the life forces of this place the plants the animals the water the everything from the land everything from the earth and those um those uh, those tamikh they in the, in the how food is given story, uh, food give us everything we need for food, for medicine, for homes, for everything we need to, to live well. And all we have to do is sing songs of thanks so that those to me keep coming back to life. They keep, uh, 
they keep returning for us. So, so, so I want to um, uh, just uh, think about those uh, uh, those gifts and emphasize no sacrifice. The, the natural world didn't sacrifice themselves for us humans. They knew we were coming and decided to take care of us. And that's why we have this kinship relationship with the earth, because the, the earth was doing very well without us humans, and then us humans showed up. And we we don't know how to live our lives like the other Tamikh. We don't know how to live in ways that contribute to the well-being and health of all of the other Tamikh around us, all of the other interconnected species, the water, the earth. And we need to practice that. On my small screen, I've got to get this, and just remove the, the, the gallery as I was uh, passing into my screen. There we go. So this, uh, this uh, picking up the pieces. So when, when, when Fox uh, comes along and, and brings him back to life, he does it by, by, by uh, where where uh, Sin where Sinclair is at his latest uh, misadventure and been torn to pieces. So and 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 a lot of times it's not just visual because sometimes he's been there for a while and it's not very pleasant. He can be a little stinky. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes uh, Fox will come along and you know, the stench will be so bad he'll have to use a stick and gather up these pieces and. Breathe into the pile and and step over it four times, and then uh, Sinclair comes back to life. So this is uh, important as a as a knowledge production metaphor. It's what it's what we're what we're engaged in as well. We gather up the bits of the outcomes of the past and present. We we have dialogue. We we breathe into the we 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 breathe into the pile. We create new understanding. And that new understanding is not enough to just create new understanding. We need to practice it and and apply it in our in our lives. And this is the the, the steps that are that are there. So in the in the in, in the school of education, some of what we've been doing is a uh, is is connecting with with uh, with educators with uh, with. With with Cecilich and Intracupmic in this case, uh, knowledge keepers. There's a uh, uh, Dennis Saddleman who's authored the the monster poem about our residential schools. If uh, uh, has anybody heard, in here heard that poem? Yeah, I encourage all of you do a do a, do 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 a search or look up uh, Dennis Saddleman, the the monster. It's a it's a it's a it's a story of the residential schools that will will will, will rock you. It will it will it will it will give you insights into what happens and also give you some of the insight into the potential. So 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 Dennis uh, was a residential school survivor. He was abused horribly in the residential school, but he survived and became the word warrior and and shares poetry to transform the school monster. <clears throat> so what the school monster did was, as I said, was uh, very, very harsh, targeted uh, uh, indigenous families, targeted, targeted indigenous kids to, to destroy their, their identity, their connections as peoples, as a, as a diverse humanity that uh, because they, we were in the way of access to our lands and resources and all of that uh, uh, material wealth that's associated with our, our, our lands and homelands. So we, we started to, started to look at, uh, pick up those pieces together. Picking up the pieces is actually an exhibit of, made up of bits of residential schools from across Canada. And it was an art exhibit at the at the Kelowna Art Gallery. So hopefully some of you have attended it. There are also online versions. And we've also been uh, connecting teachers and Selic knowledge keepers to the water, to 
uh, not just talking about it in classrooms, but uh, getting out together and developing relationships with the water that are appreciative. And once you develop a relationship with the water, with each other, then, then, and then you can't just be neglectful anymore. You have to take some responsibility for that water and, and, and each other. <clears throat> Here are some UBCO Indigenous grad students hosted by Silik at Kithliluk, or also known as Spotted Lakes. So if you look closely, you can see Noah in there. You can see, see a few others. And but this is a, also an, an example of um, of of seal here being very opening and welcoming to to indigenous folks from elsewhere and everybody else as well. Is that uh, is that letting everybody know that there's there's a people here and that we have knowledge, we have history, we have a future, we have a pedagogy, we have epistemology, and we have all of the ologies. And 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 we've uh, we've uh, taken taken very good care of this place for thousands of years, and uh, so it's uh, very pragmatic to connect with us. And uh, some of the relationships being developed: the seal knowledge keepers, elders, youth, educators engaging in creative land-based uh, co-curricular making. So so this is a these are these are these are some new developments. These have only happened recently that Seelik people or indigenous peoples in in BC are contributing to curricular resource development in 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 re really meaningful ways that are actually connected to place and and, and are developed as a uh, as a collaboration <clears throat> in the in the old uh, not so not so old uh, quite quite uh, recent days the <clears throat> what would happen was that uh, latest uh, step would come down from the ministry saying this is what we're going to do we're going to help you <clears throat> help you uh, indigenous kids because you're culturally disadvantaged we're going to uh, <clears throat> help you through the existing system make it through give you some support, put you into the general programs. <clears throat> and we're also going to add some of your uh, culture in symbolic ways, but no, nothing transformational or systemic, but uh, to make you feel better about your continued disappearance. So that, that was the, <clears throat> that's the old story that's uh, still very much with us, but uh, we're, we're starting, to, starting to change that. And <clears throat> So some of the, let's say some of the praxis, the importance of doing, reflecting and doing again, and not just talking about it, is actually getting out there and, and developing those relationships with the water, with the earth, with the plants and the animals. And in a, use this example of a couple of a, kind of a cultural ways coming together. So in, in <clears throat> In the Okanagan, there is a, the Western Ocean of uh, bringing the garden to the village. And, and, and that, that has, a, it has, some, uh, has some key benefits. Unfortunately, that turned into some of the, the, the mass uh, uh, destructive uh, agriculture that's quite uh, impactful to ecosystems. But, um, but that bringing the garden to the village, there's also the bringing the village to the garden. So this is uh, this is what uh, uh, is being is being understood and realized by 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 others. As Sila Okanagan, we've kind of known it all along and for granted that uh, that if we want the the food the food chiefs to keep uh, giving us food security and wellness security, then we have to take care of the water. We have to not uh, bring 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 the bring the salmon salmon pond here, but to go to the river, we take care of the river, we take care of the ecosystem, of, <clears throat> and, and that we take care of the berry patches, we, we take care of the, the, <clears throat> the, 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 the root fields, and we take care of the, the larger ecosystems management as, as food-based uh, societies. And so, so, 
So that's what we're, we're doing in, in multiple ways. So this is a recent picture from the other day. So if you look out, uh, out past the EME building, you'll see a whole bunch of stripped up uh, areas where, where future teachers have been pulling weeds and, and addressing the invasives and working on reestablishing some of the Seelic indigenous uh, species. So we've been working on that as well as uh, uh, raised beds and doing some or organic uh, organic farming and and <clears throat> looking at uh, food production where we uh, looking to those place based local connections which are also make us more much more producers than consumers. As consumers, we don't have much of a reciprocal relationship with our foods we eat and the health and well-being of the place. It's kind of a more of a relationship with uh, some of the some of the some of the corporations. So, so these are some of the relationships we're 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 working at. We're also aware that these are life gifts; they must be continuously renewed. We can never take them for granted. The 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 uh, food chief story that uh, if you if you don't know what uh, what uh, what happens is that uh, for, us, for us to survive the natural world of our food chiefs said that they'd uh, give us their lives and all of that but we had to sing them into sing them back into life continuously so so but it's not enough for just a one or two one or two to be singing the whole community there needs to be a critical mass appreciating the, the natural world, appreciating diversity culturally and uh, uh, biologically, ecologically, that uh, if there's a few of us are doing it and the same old will continue. We need this uh, critical mass to get to a uh, puck everyday praxis. And this is what uh, these, uh, these, these Kaori story ways as a, as a, as a pedagogical pra uh, practice or praxis is that uh, these stories we didn't have, uh, we didn't uh, traditionally, the, back in the day, there weren't, uh, they didn't sit everybody down and say, now we're going to analyze what this story means and now we're going to interpret, you know, we're going to break it down. So that actually didn't happen. Stories were told and retold in full context so that they become part of the consciousness there's a different way of, um, of, of, of knowledge, uh, knowledge and understanding, so that uh, this too, uh, when, we, in, when we need to make the right decisions, then the stories will inform us uh, how to make the right decisions. And, and, and uh, I've, got, uh, I've got some, we'll call it the not so good news, so the not so good news, the outlook, and we've been experiencing all of these record temperatures for heat waves and atmospheric rivers and mudslides. And, and just recently, we've uh, been experiencing a lot of the uh, warmest temperatures ever recorded for this time of year. And of course, we've, so many of you have heard about the record temperatures ever in, in Lytton and, and, and the wildfires there. <clears throat> so. So, so the the scientists, the educators, the community who've been monitoring uh, our uh, our carbon emissions and and what what we need to do to kind of turn things around. So apparently, by by 2030, we have to start changing changing things, uh, changing the way we're we're living, or the future looks uh, quite bleak for us. So, so we also know too that uh, we seem to sometimes we're not very willing to change. We've got uh, we've got uh, we've we've uh, channeled rivers. We've banked banked them. We've uh, uh, well, uh, fires of raised you know raised communities. Uh, uh, mudslides have wiped out the Coquihalla, but we just uh, rebuild it and carry on, and really without changing too much. So, so sometimes we, we 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 need a further nudge, but those nudges are certainly getting uh, uh, louder. 
So, so there, there, there are some, there are some good news. So, I mentioned before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, calls to action the First Peoples principles of learning, the UN Declaration, that those are pathways to Indigenous peoples' diverse humanity. And so, so this, uh, say, so patriarchy, colonialism have been quite destructive in terms of uh, outcomes to life givers. We've got all of this uh, violence and isms, racism, sexism, and all of that. So, so the the late uh, Padmasani scholar John Mohawk um, commented on uh, on on the on the development of uh, Western Western knowledge when when indigenous peoples of the Americas were connecting with, uh, with, with, with Western peoples, it was all men. So, so he raised the question, uh, why would any society limit, it, limit its intellectual and creative potential by 50% by not allowing women to, to participate? <clears throat> so, so, so um, that uh, will, 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 We'll, we'll, we'll revisit that as a let's say one that's one of the that's one of the uh, uh, outcomes that uh, us indigenous folks we can give ourselves a, a, a nod for that because we've been valuing in many cases uh, uh, placing a <clears throat> placing a, a lot of status and influence on the role on the voices and and contributions of, of, of the life givers, women, matriarchs in our societies. And so, so that, uh, that's a 50% improvement right there. So can we cl continue cl uh, collectively learn from the past and present, create the wisdom so peoples to be can have food and well-being security? Well, let's say we potentially have access to the most knowledge and creativity ever, women contributing, but, uh, with the indigenous peoples contributing, some radical collaborations can happen. These are radical because these uh, have, haven't happened. So what uh, they're, 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 they're happening now, we're, we're, we're just now here after 160 years, there's collaboration with, with with us to say how can we take care of this place better. Well, these land acknowledgments, those are people and Earth Mother diversity acknowledgments. They're humanizing. When I say it's overdue, it's uh, been a long time for us to be acknowledged as human, as part of humanity, with no language, all of that. A lot of it's been the old colonial story. You're primitives, and you're in the way, and we need to get rid of you, and you're the problem, and you know, you know, all, all, all of that stuff. We're, we're unlearning. So, so we, we know for sure that our collective intellectual and creative potential is much greater. <clears throat> so, got some, got some advice. Get to know the indigenous people in whose homelands you're situated. Co-create some pach pach curriculum. And so, when we look at. Uh, what can we celebrate? What do we have to celebrate in, in Learning Week? Do we, do we have uh, bringing back to life songs? So I'd say lucky for all of us that uh, <clears throat> with, uh, with life givers, indigenous peoples around the world and collaborations with universities and communities, we can uh, kind of Bring that uh, coyote, coyote mind power to make the world safe for the coming humans, for the peoples to be. We have the potential and the capacity to do that because the the mind power that is destructive is the same mind power that can also transform and 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 create create uh, reciprocity and balance again. So so there's that, potential and we're going to need it. So this uh, notion of collective kinship praxis, where teachers, educators, and when we get to know each other, we uh, take on some auntie and uncle roles now. We're no longer the disconnected teachers. We have some responsibilities to love and look out for and care for the kids we're connected to uh, now and in the future. 
And we've got some 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 good turnips. The Okanagan sakai are back for the time being. And we've got uh, these uh, songs that bring the Tamik back to life or are are are, are reemerging. You've heard the Okanagan song. And that's an inclusive song. It's uh, not everybody can be Selic Okanagan, but you can certainly sing that song together and we can learn uh, learn with each other. And also think about the other collective song we've got. And I say, <clears throat> think about that when you hear O Canada, when you hear the Okanagan song, think about the songs, what we give voice to, what we activate as, as our life ways, as what we do with each other and for each other. How much of that is the old colonial story that reproduces and how much are our songs uh, bringing back to life and looking out for the, the future peoples. And, and that uh, is a song ceremony. It's uh, certainly all of that, but it's also uh, the metaphor of our, of our life ways, what we give voice to. And kind of a neat thing to think about is uh, our our language in Seelichin is also the 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 term for water Seelich. So it's uh, taking a, some responsibility, the knowing that uh, our voices are very connected to the water, to this place, and we are the water, we are the we are the we are the land, we are the where the plants, the animals, we, we know all of that in terms of chemistry, physiology, and all of that, but we're also, we're also the, the, the land where the people in terms of the health and well-being. So, so we've got, uh, we've got, uh, I mentioned these, uh, these uh, sparks, these sparks that ignite when we, when we, when we, uh, sometimes there's friction, when we think about uh, the ways we're doing things or what we've what we've uh, done in the past and looking at uh, some some of what we've done in the past if we're if we're going to be scale look these humans who can um, whatever we imagine we can make that happen so so can we learn from the past leave some of the isms what's destructive to children to the life givers leave that in the past and create this new understanding going forward the more we the more we practice it, the better we'll get at it. But there's a reason that there's those these uh, uncomfortable feelings sometimes when we think oh, something is wrong here, something is not right. But uh, uh, the I'd say the good news is that uh, indigenous peoples and others, uh, critical theorists, uh, there's a there's 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 much opportunity to 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 contribute new understanding from multiple perspectives rather than uh, antagonistic kind of uh, clashes. And this is what we can, let's say, learn and, and practice uh, learning our songs. And, and this is something that we can practice as educators, seeing the gifts, the potential in each other, in the kids, and connecting each other and the future generation to those songs, those life ways that that uh, produce and make the world safe for the for the coming humans, for the peoples to be. That's a, uh, that's our challenge, and uh, that's the the end end of the end of the show for now. And just for just for homework, I mentioned uh, Coyote's Power, and ask you all to think about where Coyote's Power comes from. It comes from this place. And you can still see it on the you can see it on the on the cliff near Carameus. It comes from coyote's poop is still is still all, all strewn down that cliff. So when we think about our power to make the world safe for the peoples to be, as we that was a gift from Sinclair from Coyote to us, depends a lot on what we leave behind on the on the poop that we produce. And and that is our that is our legacy. That can be good stuff, or it can be very destructive. So limnant. So we have some time for questions and discussion. Um, I'm really hoping um, that uh, we both we can both take some questions from here in the room as well as online. 
Um, our, uh, it, for those of you that are online, uh, please read, write your question in the chat and we'll have somebody here in the room read out your question uh, to the room so it can be heard in the room and, and heard um, for the recording. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to start just by um, acknowledging I'm, I love the stories. And, and so I'm, um, as we start to think about bringing these stories into our, our classrooms as a collective group, um, can you think of, um, you know, what are some of the resources in community that we can tap into? Like where, where are, uh, cause there's so many different opportunities that the Okanagan Nation um, and now can others kind of are facilitating opportunities to learn. And I'm just wondering if you could share a little bit of uh, for those of us that are hungry to, to keep learning, where do we, um, where can we um, learn from in the community? Okay, okay, uh, so, so uh, you, you mentioned some of the, some of the key uh, starting places, uh, the Anaokan Center, Sealuk uh, uh, Okanagan Nation, as well as all of the, all of the member communities of the, of the, of the, of the, of the Sealuk people. So wherever you are, if you're in, if you're in, if you're in Kelowna or West Bank, you connect with the West Bank First Nation or Sinchweep's Museum or, you can connect to as well. Uh, every school district uh, has has uh, has uh, indigenous departments who have connections to Seal Okanagan peoples and 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 uh, uh, partnerships are continuously being developed between between uh, UBCO here, the School of Education, and the Naukan Center. The the uh, uh, Okanagan Nation, and um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give the I'll give the I'll give the fisheries uh, uh, a, a plug for sure because that's been one of the one of the great stories of the Okanagan sockeye return is that uh, you can connect with the the Okanagan Nation fisheries, and in your classrooms you can grow 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 fry, and you can participate in the annual fry release. Which, uh, so kids get to connect with the water, connect with the food chief, and uh, connect with uh, all of the inter interconnected, interdependent uh, species relationships that are associated with water and the salmon and the aquatic communities. So there are numerous books. So there are uh, uh, check out uh, Thetis books. Um, check out some of the some of the resources from from. In the Okanagan Nation, uh, yeah, and uh, there's a there 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 are many uh, facilitators. We've got uh, we're connecting with uh, speech and hemp workshops. There are there are people throughout the Okanagan who can do that. Uh, I'd recommend that. That's a really cool uh, uh, cool uh, practice where the pedagogy is the is the is the practice. So you get to know where where speech and where the hemp grows. You learn how you learn how how, uh, how uh, critically endangered it is, and also how potential it has to recover. You also, when you work all of these strands, you get all these strands that are kind of weak and brittle, and then you start working them, start twining them together, and and then that's that's how you build these uh, very strong, very Interconnected, very enduring, uh, good for good for nets. They're waterproof, good for clothing or hats. And but um, uh, this is the notion of uh, educational leadership in a seal of context as well. Is what we're doing is twining, intertwining, bringing ourselves together, making ourselves into stronger, more interdependent, uh, interconnected communities. Rather than these, these uh, are more more uh, brittle, disconnected. The more connected we are, the the stronger as a as a larger whole we are. So so lots of opportunities. You can you can Google. You can look it up in the phone book. You can uh, you can send me an email. So I do uh, invite if you have a question, stick up your hand, or if there's a question in the chat. Um... So we have a microphone that will run around 
bathroom. And while you're thinking, I'm going to ask another one, which is um, one of the things that uh, I, the elders that I spent, I grew up with and, and were teaching was, was the importance of um, being in relationship, in relationship with people, with the land, with um, the, the, the territory that we're in. And I think, you know, thinking of the power of place as a theme, um, I'm, I'm just thinking of as, uh, if there is um, uh, some advice you would give to particularly early career faculty when they're arriving to our campus, but, but even just faculty in general who are teaching on our campus, um, you know, what are the, what are some of the um, kind of the most uh, important things that you think about in terms of being relationship with our, with this place? And, and can you uh, talk a little bit further about kind of uh, maybe how, um, you know, how faculty can, can connect place into their own um, kind of research scholarship, uh, uh, you know, in addition to teaching? So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say um, I'd, I'd uh, connect to uh, I would connect to to uh, Barbara's uh, uh, some of what she mentioned at the beginning that her children and schools are connecting to Silic uh, knowledge and language and and that's a it's a it's a connection there. So through I think that's probably the most important connection is through our through our children. We, the more we can collectively look out, look out for them, and connect them and each other to this place, and take care of it in in meaningful ways. That uh, that um, it's uh, it's it's actually not that uh, not that difficult to do. There's the Indigenous Studies Department here. There's the, the Okanagan School of Education. I've got uh, me and some other folks there, and. And uh, there are there are, there are the indigenous program services. They've got really great programs. So 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 check those out. There's a there are lots of opportunities, and there are waiting opportunities that are saying, "Come and see us, and let's see what we can do together." So so yeah, I would say it's as simple as uh, asking, uh, looking around. Uh, uh, and, uh, definitely they. The opportunities are are, are, are are all around. Yeah, and I I, I really do um, believe that the the humility that comes with taking the time to learn is is incredibly important. Please. Is this on? Oh, wow, that's loud. Sorry. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name's Alan Ace Ferguson. I'm a new faculty here at UBC Okanagan in Indigenous Studies. I'm a trauma repair therapist and a psychologist by background. Um, so I uh, I want to ask you a question um, because the, the the deep scholarship, the original scholarship of the stories, are very powerful, and I'm hearing them for the first time today as a newcomer to this territory. I'm Anishinaabek, uh, but there are a lot of people listening to these stories, probably like me for the first mm -hmm. time. And I know that your your talk was titled after Skneep, the coyote, but because I'm um, I'm a trauma repair psychologist for many years, I was struck by Fox and the pedagogy of Fox. And you shared resources, Thetis books, and uh, some names of some books where I could pursue uh, reading more of this original scholarship. But I wanna ask you while you're here, so you make sure that I am uh, not on the wrong track or I have some cultural oversight around my thinking. But when you shared the story about uh, the broken bones of Coyote, and sometimes it's hard to see, sometimes it's hard to smell. It attacks the senses. It makes me think about frontline trauma repair work and then the job of Fox. So I became really interested in Fox pedagogy as, as a result of your talk. And correct me if my thinking is not on the right track um, and making that association with how to heal and that, that 
that middle part between, you know, you have the destruction of colonization and um, the erasure of our people. And then you have that piece of time where we're trying to breathe life back in and how to do that. And finding the correct model and approach has been very, very hard. You know, uh, I think we've had Aboriginal Healing Foundation, we've had TRC, we've had Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women's Report, but I don't think any of that is informed by Fox pedagogy. So if you could speak to that, mm. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, yeah I'd, say, I'd say the the, the role the role of uh, the, the role of Fox is what uh, brings the uh, say the the, the reflective, uh, continuously creative or praxis of of becoming whole again when we've been fragmented or when parts of us have been taken away or, or removed is that's a uh, part of the part of the reconnecting and returning to wholeness so we can see that that's done in you can see it happening in multiple ways so so in the in the okanagan and, and elsewhere uh, we're in some cases bringing bones back from museums or re returning, returning to wholeness, or bringing our kids back who have been disconnected or taken away by, by family services, and or, you know, or, or some of our kids have been, our youth have been taken away by, by some of the addictions and and all of that. So so when we're we're returning to returning to wholeness, we're re we're rebuilding. Uh, when I mentioned the matriarchs, is we're having some of the some of those. Uh, Returning those loving relationships, those appreciative relationships that are healthy to place to extended family, or reestablishing those. As uh, educators, I can say that um, when I had that diagram up of um, we have uh, Indigenous peoples at the Sela peoples, so they targeted us. They said your kids are at the center. We're going to grab those kids out of there and put them over here, and we're going to try to get rid of you that way. So, so that's um, uh, that's where. A lot of the trauma co uh, comes from, but where the, uh, or I think for all of us, and we think that that just happened to Indigenous peoples, happened to everybody else who are doing that either knowingly or unknowingly, as a as a as a as a part of the relationships that we're all producing. So when when all of us, when we start collectively uh, appreciating the water, connecting to the water, to the the, the life gifts. And we start developing those relationships of appreciation and respect. Then, then that's, uh, 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 I think, in my understanding from some of the some of the matriarchs that are some of whom I've mentioned, that's how we, that's how we uh, restore the health of our kids, and restore the health of the place. It's a uh, very very much a. Uh, tied, bound, or tied together. And welcome. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful uh, presentation. My name is Amira Ahmed. I'm a PhD student in Faculty of Creative and Critical Studies, and my uh, my uh, study studying uh, um, interactive media in global citizenship education. And I was wondering about interrogating indigenous perspective in my study as like how we can introduce interactive media presenting these stories that you are uh, like talked about. And you talked about the barrier of language and how we being translating these stories are like do, doesn't do them uh, yani just, uh, justice. So, and how I'm wondering how the, yani, the visual presentation of this uh, stories can not like present them enough. So, and like, good. So I was wondering how we can cross uh, the barrier of language. Do you think about it's better to present them in the original language or like with translation? How best to introduce media reflecting these stories in education? Because from my, uh, like what I heard, that like it's only words we are trying to interrogate these stories and interrogate this in education but there is no actual efforts in making them like connecting into like uh, 
children background and making them stick with children. So I was use, using, if we are using interactive media in classrooms, how best to approach this in order to best communicate these stories to children? <clears throat> okay, so um, there's kind of a, I'd say multiple parts to that. There's an, in, 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 in some ways, uh, English has been useful so that uh, many of us from, from diverse uh, cultural backgrounds can understand each other. There's a language that we can engage in, but it's also the colonial aspect has been very homogenizing. And so what we're, we're, we're finding out is that, uh, that uh, homogenization, it's a uh, cultural homogenization reduces the cultural diversity of, uh, of humanity. So also um, we, we know in a, uh, in ecosystems and biology that uh, the more diverse an ecosystem is, the more stable and the healthier it is. So we're, we're just kind of figuring that out with the uh, with, uh, uh, cultural diversity as well, that that, that, uh, that uh, same dynamic is, is there. So, so, so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I'd say, I'd say it's a, it's a, it's a both. We have to kind of straddle that uh, uh, this or that. We 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 don't have one uh, kind of a singular strategy, but um, one uh, I think one key strategy is 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 connecting with the diversity of if we're going to decolonize and we're no longer colonizing, erasing, looking to get rid of the indigenous peoples wherever we are, wherever we've sit, wherever wherever we we're living and learn we've learn to call that place home, then it makes a lot of uh, uh, sense to, to create uh, humanizing relationships by, yeah. As, uh, as Barbara mentioned, if we went, to, we went to Greece, then we might be expected to, we might uh, pick up some Greek language and some of, the, some of the culture there. If we go somewhere else, then, but that's been a, <clears throat> That's been kind of a brushed aside as a as a as an active uh, practice. So that I think is a is a really good starting point, and 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 it can be those uh, use of um, uh, translators and and uh, and and, and uh, uh, the tra translated uh, text, or just subtitles, and all of that. You know, those are those are very useful as well, but. Uh, uh, being being mindful of um, of appreciating difference and diversity, the more we practice that, the better we'll get at it. We haven't been very good at it as a Western society. We've been very quite uh, quite cruel to non-binary and non with anybody who's non. Uh, so our historical record is pretty clear on that. But uh, we also have the ability to to change that in our everyday lives. So. And we change that here by learning some in Selig uh, uh, Yeah, so uh, next time uh, next time I see you, you can say why, and I'll say why could you keep, and I acknowledge you're here. So as an ed consultant, I have a pedagogy question. I know in the room we have engineers and biologists and chemists and all over. So not everybody can do land-based pedagogy or, I don't know, incorporate some of, some of the things that you mentioned. But what would be your wish? Like, I'm wondering, what do you wish that everybody who teaches on our campus or maybe even in Vancouver that they can incorporate maybe to help sink, sink, come back to life to, you know, yeah. What just basically what, what, where does, where to begin to acknowledge the land or where we are. Um, yeah. Some of those traditions, some of the stories. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, I think you've uh, answered your own question a little bit. Uh, 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 a little bit there, and as as uh, what about uh, say what what about STEM or what about uh, you know these areas that uh, they're not uh, they're not story they're not uh, creativity and 
but um, I'd uh, just I'd like to say that uh, these stories, they are very, very much uh, the real world, the plants, the animals, that is, uh, that is very much the real world that uh, we're a part of. And uh, there are the opportunities when we say uh, knowledge convergence, and it's not this or that. It's not, uh, oh, we're going to do it all be in, indigenous now. <clears throat> but, we, but what we can do, and I think it's a reasonable expectation, is that uh, those of you who are STEM educators, those of you who are in, uh, in, in business and management, is to say, what's your, what's your bringing back to life? song how does what uh, how does the knowledge you produce contribute to the well-being of of the of the, of the future generations of this the ecosystems of this place i think that's a uh, really fair and uh, i think it's a question we need to address so that uh, our, our our future generations our future kids can uh, live well and have a chance at, at good lives Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll try and keep it a simple question for a simple answer. Um, so as a, as a newcomer to Canada and a new guest on the Seal traditional territory, um, I'm very mindful of power of symbols uh, and language as well. Um, so I think Canada is really good in, you know, embedding the maple leaf as a symbol. We see it in many ways at different levels of, of society. What is a seal symbol that, maybe not equivalent, but a seal symbol that, that we can carry forward, we can point to as, as a guide, as something to, to rally attention towards? <clears throat> okay. Um... Sounds like I need to assign some homework. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, but um, but I but I would um, say that uh, those connections. So when you when you when you hear the uh, hear the Okanagan song, for example, is that that's uh, that's an expression of that says uh, we are we are. <clears throat> We are beautiful in a healthy whole way because of our relationships to the land, the ecology that uh, is healthy and whole. And as long as we maintain that uh, that, that relationship, then 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 uh, we, we, the future, you know, looks uh, uh, looks like we have a we, we have a good chance. Uh, but uh, we have to. I would say that um, I can't uh, I can't think of a kind of a singular si singular way other than um, other than uh, <clears throat> I think we can well, we could probably replace that uh, that uh, maple leaf with um, maybe some maybe a spider's web maybe a Maybe the maybe the Earth Mother, uh, but uh, yeah, I think um, I think I think relationships and symbols, concepts, is uh, uh, connecting to these notions of uh, as as humans, and this uh, uh, I think uh, people throughout the world we can learn from what what are our concepts as humans connected to place. So here. Our concepts as humans connected to place is that uh, we have this mind power, where we've got this incredible uh, creativity. We can we can do amazing things uh, tech, uh, technologically. We can do amazing things in terms of science and controlling this or or uh, changing this into that and uh, developing. We, we've got this incredible. Uh, it's uh, an incredible mind power, <clears throat> but um, uh, we can also, I think, uh, 
Maybe this is the role of a of, of fox too. Maybe it's the maybe the the fox symbol comes up of a this uh, creative reflection and praxis of picking up the pieces and creating this new understanding. I think uh, that's a way that uh, when I said um, not all of us can be Sukhanakinuk, not all of us can be Anishinaabe or Hawaiian or whatever that, but but in every place we can we can achieve. And there's no reason we can't uh, degrees of indigeneity and indigeneity as a as an achievable relationship where where those of us who are here that our life ways aren't destructive and destroying the ecology the ecosystems where where we sit where we're smart enough or we should be bright enough to to develop a balance where where our life ways are not destroying the homelands or where we live and yeah i think uh that's uh i don't have a symbol for that indigeneity but uh certainly a I think a destination that we can we can get to so thank you so much bill for for um sharing stories with us today um teachings of coyote teaching as a fox um I'm reminded of um, I don't know what I'm as a as a kid growing up and listening to stories of coyote. Um, Cree Métis elders always talk about coyote as the trickster and and the importance of humor as part of learning as well. And so, thank you for bringing so that sense of humor to this to this keynote as well. Um, for those that are um, online, we're going to end the recording and end the session here.